Hey, Bubba James. I wanted to do uh, a little bit, you know, of a Sunday news show. Um, you know, I it really had my mind blown uh, on Friday with Sam Altman's firing um, for a few reasons that I can get into uh, later. But the bigger thing that came from that um, while I was researching Sam Altman was I learned a lot of things about him that I didn't know. I had never really heard of this guy. I just knew he was the open AI CEO. CEO. Uh, he has, um, apparently, uh, he has a history with, you know, Elon Musk uh, that I didn't know about. And apparently he has um, a big history with uh, WorldCoin. And I've also heard he's a large shareholder of something called the Humana Pen. So anyway, um, I've learned a lot about this guy recently. And, um, you know... It's really kind of blown my mind to the point where if I didn't make this video, I would just be thinking about it. So uh, with that, I want to say uh, this is all uh, for parody uh, and entertainment purposes only. Uh, I will get into some stock charts and stuff like that. Uh, so that's obviously just going to be my opinion, too. You know, not investment advice in any way, um, but uh, interesting uh, character we got going on, and especially since I've had a theory, you know, that I've shared for a while, that the Simpsons recently confirmed that they are trying to hook us up to the blockchain. They are trying to make us nodes in the blockchain, uh, even if you're familiar with uh, cryptography. Anyway, let's just read into uh, this article from Time Magazine, what to know about WorldCoin and the controversy around it, uh, written eight. So, over the past few months, shiny metallic orbs have materialized cities around the world, from New York to Berlin to Tokyo. Its creators hail the orbs as revolutionary devices, ushering in a new era of global humanity and financial stability. Its detractors slam them as invasive, dystopian, and exploitative. Welcome to the rollout of WorldCoin, an AI meets crypto project from OpenAI founder Sam Altman that has stirred endless controversy. The startup uses, or uses orbs to scan people's eyes in exchange for a digital ID and possibly uh, some cryptocurrency, uh, depending on what country they live in. Altman and his co-founder, uh, Alex Blania, um, hope that WorldCoin will provide um, a new solution to online identity in a digital landscape rife with scams, bots, and even AI imposters. Uh, but privacy experts are uh, concerned about the WorldCoin's collection of biometric data and how exactly the project uh, will keep and protect that data going forward. On 8-2, um, apparently one day before this was posted, Kenya became the first country to suspend WorldCoin's activities uh, and its government launched a multi-agency investigation into the project's practices. Uh, so a big theme of colonialism um, that's going to be uh, introduced here. And here's what's to know about the technology. What is the aim of WorldCoin navigating the online world? In so let's just think about this. Let me read the sentence first. Navigating the online world in 2023 can feel like an endless obstacle because uh, course of lurking dangers. Many websites require a login and password. Scammers have all sorts of strategies to get you to click on links and send them money. Uh, bots run rampant on social media platforms. And with the rise of AI, our collective ability to discern who is human online and who isn't is about to become much worse. So let's just think about how obvious this is. Sam Altman is the CEO, in, or he was the CEO and founder of this company, um, that has brought chat GPT um, into the world. This generative AI, you know, he, he, he's created this generative AI arms race, essentially. Um, and now he's, he's at the, in, I'm not just, it's not just him, okay? Elon Musk, they're all in what George Carlin called the club, right? What some people call the illuminated ones, what some people call, um, you know, they've got, a, they've got a few names for their clubs. But anyway, it's a club. All right, it's a club, and I think a lot of people think they're not, they're not in the club because they're not rich and famous. You know, I I, I tend to disagree. I think that, I, I think that especially if you're working for these big companies, 
you're you're in the club. If you're high up at one of these, you know, S and P five hundred companies, yeah, I think you're in the club. You may not know it, but you're probably participating in, in, in rituals. If you're, you know, anyway, that's me editorializing. What is the aim of WorldCoin? Navigating uh, the online world in 2023 uh, can feel like an endless obstacle. And with the rise of AI, our collective ability to discern who is human online and who isn't is about to become much worse. Earlier this year, OpenAI's GPT-4, uh, Sam Altman's creation, uh, was even able to convince a human to solve a CAPTCHA, a te- so a CAPTCHA, a technology uh, designed to differentiate humans from bots on its behalf. So this article says that Sam Altman started WorldCoin in t- 2019 to solve this problem. And then now in 2023, he's already made WorldCoin. So he had already made the solution to a problem that he also just made. And remember, this isn't just him. He's just the character. He's just the mascot. All right. He, he's a puppet. You know, he's got, he's a puppet. Okay, but this is just how they operate. This is why when people talk about how dangerous it is that we've all fallen into the Republican versus Democrat debate, it's because it's called, I think it's called a Hegelian dialect, where they just create a BS problem and they cause this ridiculous debate that's contrived because they already have the solution that both sides are going to agree on. And now they're showing you how they do this with Altman. He creates WorldCoin in 2019. He already is doing this, right? And what I'm going to show with these pictures they, Microsoft, who's also involved in this, they've already been looking for a solution to this problem too, and it's also remarkably similar. How interesting. Oh, also since 2019. Oh, and, and uh, Bill Gates, he's that um, guy who, we'll talk about uh, some of his investments too in this video later um, that I've, I've also made. Earlier this year, um, you know, OpenAI is now created a cybersecurity risk. Who knew, right? As a founder and the CEO of OpenAI, uh, Sam Altman bears responsibility for problems like this, right? He, he created this problem and he also has this. It's literally, this is a Time Magazine article telling you Sam Altman created this problem. This is not my opinion. This is the opinion of Time Magazine. Sam Altman bears responsibility for this problem, and Sam Altman has also just given us a potential solution. This is how these people work, okay? This is not, this is, I think I made that clear. A way to definitively distinguish between humans and AIs. If all humans online could prove that they were in fact humans, then scams and imposters would dramatically decrease and the digital landscape would become more accurate representations of us as a society. So in order to prove that humans are humans, right? So we have to prove we're humans now, right? That's on us, you know, what to do. And, and here's what they're going to do. They are going to make you do this to keep your job. That is where this is going. That is why this affects you. If you are employed, I can 100% guarantee you, they are going to make you do this, something like this, in the name of cybersecurity, to keep your job. And if you're stuck on salary, you are going to agree. If you're deep in debt, depending on your salary job, you will agree. You will upload your your eyes to WorldCoin or whatever version that they say is the regulated way to do this. That's how you are going to need to log into your computer at work. So all of this is happening, this is coming to you. Okay, this isn't isn't just people in Kenya and Sudan. Okay, this is going to come to you. It's already probably gonna be, you know, it's already being programmed in your mind with the Simpsons that it's coming to you. So in order to prove that humans are humans, uh, WorldCoin scans irises, which are unique to their owners. This technique is not unlike the biomet, this is literally the mark of the beast. This is not unlike the biometric scans clear conducted uh, by Clear or Apple's Face ID, right? Apple, that that company whose logo is a apple with a bite out of it. Like Genesis is how they eat from the fruit of the tree of knowledge. Anyway, AI is knowledge. AI is the devil. This is the this is the great revelation. Period. Anyway, once World Coin, uh, AI is not the devil. AI is what represents is represented by the devil uh, in the Bible, the explosion of knowledge, right? That's why Apple has that bite out of it um, because they believe that we're still in the garden of Eden, right? And that they can just give us this apple and we're going to bite out of it. And it's about to, it's getting very clear that this is going to get very real. They are going to ask you to upload your body, your soul, your mind, whatever to the cloud. 
to the blockchain, to the metaverse, to whatever. That's what all this is about. And it's all going to be colonialization. Okay. The people in third world countries and second world countries, they're already being bribed with this, uh, with AirPods, which this article will tell you later. Um, so once WorldCoin has received a unique iris scan, the project issues a digital ID identity called a world ID. The ID is not a user's biometric data itself, but an identifier created using a cryptography method called zero knowledge proofs. If world IDs catch on, then holders could theoretically use them to sign on to all websites, just like Google offers single sign on services. The difference, Allman argues, is that a WorldCoin login will be more secure and unlinked to other information, including a user's email, name, or photograph. It is if the zero knowledge proof aspect of the tech works properly, WorldCoin uh, would allow ID holders to log into a website without that action being traceable uh, by other people or any government. In June, Okta became the, we'll get into the Okta's chart later. Okta became uh, the first major company uh, to allow users uh, to sign in with WorldCoin. Why are people signing up? Uh, WorldCoin officially launched in July uh, with the project uh, embarked on a multi-city sign-up tour. Uh, Altman posted a video of long lines outside uh, Orb Centers and said that the project was scanning in a new user every eight seconds. So they have you know, orb centers now where people can just go in, scan their irises uh, and get a new user every eight seconds. WorldCoin claims that more than 2 million people have registered for world IDs. Some people have signed up out of curiosity or affinity for the technology, uh, but many more, it seems, signed up for a simpler reason, money. In order to galvanize interest in the project, WorldCoin created its own crypto token called WLD, and has offered 25 units, uh, currently worth about $60, $60 as of the 8.3 publishing, uh, to anyone who scanned their eyes into an orb. That offer does not extend to the U.S., however, due to the country's strict regulatory environment related to crypto products. WorldCoin's cryptocurrency element serves as a marketing ploy, a global financial infrastructure, and a way to entice continued venture capital funding. Tools for Humanity. Uh, the company behind WorldCoin just raised $115 million in a funding round uh, that has been valued at $3 billion uh, last year. Around 14% of all WLD tokens have been earmarked for investors. WorldCoin, uh, which Altman says he conceived of in 2019, has been publicly, has been intertwined uh, for the with the crypto ecosystems for better or worse, right? So Altman says he created WorldCoin in 2019, and then in 2023, he created the problem that WorldCoin is now supposed to solve, uh, which is that we need to prove we're humans because AI uh, has, has gotten too smart, and he's the one who's making AI uh, too smart and, you know, whatever. Anyway, it was publicly announced um, in the summer of 2021 when crypto was near its height and the project's original backers include Sam Bankman-Fried, right, the former CEO of STX, accused of perpetuating an $8 billion fraud and the collapsed hedge crypto fund Three Arrows Capital. Sam Altman says uh, he hopes that WorldCoin's financialized element could lead to uni universal basic income. This is another thing Elon Musk talks about for its users, U UBI, right? Altman uh, has long been interested in UBI, right? That was also one of the very small side plots of, you know, the pandemic was, hey, getting everyone used to, hey, we can just get paychecks from the government now. Maybe, you know, robots and, you know, that was just kind of implanted there. Anyway, they're going to bribe you to do this if they can't force you to. Uh, Altman has long been interested in, in UBI. Uh, when he was the president of startup Accelerator Y Combinator, he led a pilot trial that aimed to give... 1500 a month to Oakland families, but the project was significantly delayed and reduced in scale. Elizabeth Rose, project director of YC Research, the incubator's nonprofit arm, uh, which has since spun off, told Wired in 2018, it's harder to give away money than you might think. WorldCoin also isn't the first project to intertwine digital identity with universal basic income. They want This is exactly what they're trying to do. They're trying to get us to have a digital ID that 
is really just kind of our, our soul, you know, and it's, it's not just, it's not just going to be a fingerprint. It's, it's, you know, they're scanning a lot more than that. WorldCoin um, also isn't the first project to intertwine digital identity uh, with UBI. Last year, a project called Huva v- Proof of Humanity attempted something similar uh, for and for a while was handing out 50 to $100 monthly in crypto to everyone who signed up. But the token's value cratered along with the larger market. Santiago Siri, a, bo- a board member of Proof of Humanity, right? So we have to prove our humanity now. Um, says that WorldCoin's cryptographic mechanisms uh, designed to protect identity rep- represent a step forward from this project. I mean, I can just see someone's boss or their manager saying, hey, man, you know, we need uh, cybersecurity. There's this new cryptographic thing. Plug it in. I mean, I know people who, you know, have, have 50 things at their desk. They'll, they'll go click 50 freaking things at their desk. To go every time they log into their computer, then they got seven apps on their iPhone that you have to answer just, just to log in. Like, I'm telling you, your boss, your manager is going to be like, hey, man, cybersecurity, you know, you, you got to get WorldCoin now. Just scan your irises. It's no big deal. Um, you know, you got to prove your humanity, right, while you're at this job that's enslaving you, uh, which <laughs> required new users to post a public video to verify their identity. Siri hopes that Altman will leverage WorldCoin and his growing revenue uh, from OpenAI to redistribute wealth, right? Um, you know, Karl Marx and Bitcoin are going to have a baby. AI uh, can certainly hold true the promise of delivering a global universal basic income. The cryptographic manifesto. Uh, because it can generate that kind of sustainable wealth throughout time and support, and because it will displace jobs, they have the ethical ob- <laughs> they have the ethical obligation to actually support UBI, right? So the robots are going to take our jobs, and then we're going to negotiate that they're going to actually pay us in the afterlife. Uh, when all the dystopian movies like Terminator and, and uh, The Matrix say that's not actually what happens, they're like, why would we pay these fools? Uh, you, interestingly, just so you know, Microsoft shows how they're going to pay us. I'll get into that later. How Altman plans to pay uh, for WorldCoin's UBI, however, remains murky. Uh, he, the basic answer is that it's a Ponzi scheme, uh, hopefully. Uh, the hope is that people want to buy the token uh, because they believe this is the future. There will be inflows into this economy. Uh, new token buyers is how it gets paid for effectively, right? Oh, man. Altman told Coindesk recently, um, you know, go in public with your irises. Uh, while we got to crowdfund your, you know, your your iris identity, it's called an iris hash. It's literally called an iris hash. Like if your manager or your 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 HR manager walked up to you and said, "Hey, for you to keep your seventy five thousand dollar job, you need to have an iris hash to log into your work computers and access our data systems," would you do it? While Allman hopes the the price of World will go up, its value has been somewhat volatile. Uh, World debuted at 7.50, but has since dropped threefold and has hovered between two and three dollars over the week. Uh, why is Worldcoin facing criticism? Hmm. Uh, <laughs> many critics have called Worldcoin's business of scanning eyeballs in exchange for crypto dystopian and have compared it to compared it to bribery. Uh, I agree with the critics on that one. Uh, many people are understandably hesitant to surrender their biometric data to a private for-profit startup with certain uncertain aims, right? But, you know, if your boss is telling you wear the mask, get three boosters, or you're going to lose your job, I mean, you're going to, you did it. You did it. Even Altman himself acknowledged a clear ick factor. WorldCoin says the biometric information uh, on the orbs is deleted, right? You know, it's all deleted, right? Everything on the internet is really deleted forever uh, after being processed and converted into cryptographic code, right? We just need to we just need to process your biometric data into cryptographic code, right? Uh, you know, and that's all you need to do to keep your seventy five thousand dollar a month job or seventy five thousand dollar a year job. You know, seventy five thousand dollars a month. I mean, anyway, uh, but a. A history of Silicon Valley companies mishandling data uh, has left a sour taste in people's mouth, and some 
uh, fear that the iris scans could be used for surveillance or to be sold to third parties. Yeah, so, um, you know, they can just, they're just going to have cameras. I'm just going to, they're just going to have cameras now. Um, <laughs> they're going to have cameras in these stores, right? And they're just going to have, you know, this is how Walmart's going to solve their theft problem. You know, hey, you can't steal from Walmart anymore. We got your iris scans. If you, if you take something from Walmart and walk out, we got your iris scans, buddy. Like, we're going to charge your crypto card. We don't even need you to steal. You can just walk out. There's no line. You can't steal. You can only walk out of the store and grab something off the shelf because you automatically pay just by having your eyes open and doing it. Um, anyway, that's what uh, Amazon's, um, you know, smart stores are going to go to. Anyway, a uh, history of uh don't use bio yeah you know edward snowden coming in for us don't use biometrics for anything edward snowden wrote on twitter in response to altman's post about worldcoin in 2021 the human body is not a ticket punch uh meanwhile worldcoin's rollout uh, has been plagued by troubling reports uh from around the world an extensive 2022 article uh, from the MIT Technology Review, uh, found evidence that the project used deceptive practices to sign people up in countries like Indonesia, uh, Kenya, and Chile. Uh, Spanish language speakers, uh, for instance, uh, were given uh, terms of service notices in English, and people, it were very similar to what happened to a lot of people with the jabs. You know, they're, they were given, you know, some people were from different countries, Eastern European. What dialect do they speak? Oh, I don't know. Just take it. Um, you know, sign this paper that says you can't, you know, you know, sue Pfizer or Moderna. Um, anyway, uh, for instance, they were given terms of notices in languages they couldn't understand. And uh, people in Sudan uh, were enticed with AirPod giveaways. Uh, without being told uh, exactly uh, what they were scanning their eyeballs for. So they probably can't even fathom this technology. I mean, I, I can't even fathom this technology half the time. Um, and they're in, they're in Sudan being offered how expensive are AirPods. I mean, that, those are very expensive last time I checked. They're being offered AirPods uh, for this. And, you know, I mean, kind of hard to say no to that. That's hard for me to say no to that. Um, without being, you know, but people did this for uh, Krispy Kreme donuts. This is what they did with the lottery. People, had, people did this for lottery tickets. Some people literally just got the jabs and went along with all this because then they could be in a raffle for a countywide thing to win a Tesla or get a Krispy Kreme donut or just make their boss not like, you know, smirk at them a little bit. I mean, you know, anyway, a representative uh, for the World Coin Foundation responded to the Technology Review article in a statement to Time writing, uh, this article is not representative of the project's operations. Uh, included inaccurate information and offered a narrow personal perspective of the incredibly early stages of the project. It is also not an accurate representation of the project's global operations today. This year, hackers stole the login credentials of WorldCoin operators uh, who were tasked with signing up new users, allowing the hackers to uh, view internal information. An article by the crypto publication Block Beats alleged that people in Cambodia and Kenya uh, were selling their iris data for as little as $30 a pop to speculators on the black market who hoped that the world they collected from the scans would increase in price. I mean, this is this is wild. People in Cambodia and Kenya are selling their iris data for 30 bucks, you know, trying to make money on, on crypto. I mean, this is, this is why financial freedom and, you know, understanding this stuff is just, you know, like it, if it, you know, for them, for them, that $30 probably means a lot. You know, in America, it's not $30. It's, you know, hey, you could get fired. It's, hey, you know, you could be, you know, uh, you could be a, a social outcast, right? You've been conditioned to think that if you disagree with people on Instagram or Facebook, you know, and, and even if you don't, if you do disagree and the a person in HR or, you know, a higher up or a manager doesn't like that you're not interested in, you know, uploading your crypto cryptographic iris hash, right? What if they say that this is how, you know, we need to prove, um, you know, or something like this. Maybe it's not exactly this, but it's something along the lines of we need blockchain, we need cryptocurrency uh, or some crypto, you know, iris hash uh, equivalent uh, to prove that we've had all our medications, right? And if you're fighting against this because they've staged another, you know, pandemic or whatever, uh, which we can get into later, right? Then, you know, someone in HR might read that. Your manager might see that. They might may not like it, right? And then you might, you know, when we have a, a recession scare, you know, because of the, the fake pandemic they, they stage, you know, you'll be threatened to be one of the first people to be laid off. Anyway, 
this year, uh, hackers stole the lot. It's not even safe. Hackers stole the login credentials of WorldCoin operators uh, who are uh, tasked with signing up new users, allowing the hackers to view internal information. An article by the crypto publication BlockBeats. Uh, we already read that. My bad. I think that there are important questions to be asked about whether or not this opens the path towards artificial intelligence, colonialism, uh, proof of humanity. Right? It's called proof of humanity. You know, the artificial intelligence colonialism, the guy who's saying proof of humanity is like, no way. Uh, we have seen the ore being deployed in third world developing countries whose rules about identity and privacy uh, may not be as strong uh, as they were. They are in the European Union or in the United States. Um, regulators uh, around the world have been watching WorldCoins rise closely. Uh, the French data protection watchdog announced a probe uh, into the project over its questionable data collection and preservation. A UK regulator issued a similar warning, uh, and the Kenyan government uh, demanded WorldCoin cease its data collection activities there, uh, writing the project posed legitimate regulatory concerns uh, that required urgent action. A WorldCoin Foundation representative responded to the news in Kenya uh, in a statement at the time, writing, the demand for WorldCoin's proof of personhood, proof of personhood, this is called proof of, you gotta, you gotta prove you're a person, right? And the whole point is it, it may not be WorldCoin. We'll get into what it could be later. It may not be WorldCoin. The whole point is that this concept, this proof of personhood is going to become integrated into your life in an extremely invasive way. And they could use a, you know, medical pandemic scare. Uh, they could use a variety of things. They could use many things at once, uh, many tactics. Um, but they, they could kind of coax you into doing this. And it might not just be an iris hash. And even if it is, uh, probably not a good idea. Um, you know, even if, you know, it's to keep a $70,000 job, you know, or for some people in, you know, some of these countries, you know, just the $30 US or definitely AirPods, you know, that that's something you would do, you know, for your family, you know, anyway. Um, you know, they said the, the, the demand for world coins, proof of personhood, verif verification services in Kenya has been overwhelming, right? You know, because we're bribing them, um, resulting in tens of thousands of individuals waiting in line over a three day period to secure a world ID. Uh, WorldCoin remains committed to uh, providing an inclusive, privacy-preserving, decentralized on-ramp to the global digital economy and looks forward to resuming its services in Kenya uh, while working closely with local regulators and other stakeholders. When WorldCoin co co-founder Alex Banya, Blanya uh, was asked by Bloomberg News about login theft and black market sales, he dismissed their impact. Right? He just dismissed their impact of login theft and black, the whole reason is that the login is supposed to be secure. Um, you know, he just missed their impact. Of course, there will be fraud. Of course, there's going to be fraud in our system that we're having people basically sell their, you know, their iris hash to. Uh, it's not going to be perfect, you know, especially early on. So, you know, I, I came across this article, you know, learning about Sam Altman. Uh, from the news of his firing, and I've even read this morning that apparently he's, he might be coming back already. Sounds like Microsoft gave the call. Um, but anyway, Microsoft invests a lot into um, Sam Altman's, or maybe it's going to be his company, maybe it's not, um, you know, the company he did fi found. And they have a patent. Um, you know, they also have in 2019. Uh, and I'm not going to you know, bore you with the, the details of this. This is kind of controversial, but, um, you know, it's not really controversial. It's one of those things where it's blatantly right there in front of your face. And then the, um, you know, the fact checkers say something ridiculous, like, no, that's just not, you know, that's just not true, man. So it's called cryptocurrency uh, system using body activity data, patent W02020060606, cryptocurrency system, Using body activity data, um, it was published uh, 3 26 2020, right, right during the pandemic, right, by the same, you know, company, Mr. Microsoft, right? So it was applied for by Microsoft. Microsoft invests tons of money uh, into open AI, you know, um, you know. And so let's see what this is. The human body activity, and this, is, this came out in 2020. 
They must have updated it because I read this in 2019. Uh, human body activity associated with a task provided to a user may be used in a mining process of a cryptocurrency system. A server uh, may provide a task to a device of a uh, user which is communicatively coupled to the server a sensor communicatively coupled to or compromised in the device of the user uh, may sense body activity um, of the user so body activity data may be generated based on the sensed body activity of the user the cryptocurrency system communicatively coupled to the to the device of the of the user may verify if the body activity uh, data satisfies one or more conditions set up by the cryptocurrency system and awards cryptocurrency uh, to the user whose body activity was is very whose body activity data is verified. So let's just read that last sentence again. Now that we know in 2023, OpenAI's founder, who uh, Microsoft is investing a lot in, um, you know, is he's the, he's also uh, one of the founders of Worldcoin and Worldcoin. Um, is, is basically doing this very similar thing, rewarding people with cryptocurrency uh, for kind of acting um, as nodes in this verification process. Uh, the cryptocurrency system communicatively coupled to the device of the user may verify if the body activity satisfies one or more conditions set um, by the cryptocurrency system and awards cryptocurrency to the user uh, whose body activity data is verified. So this is something that's been in the, the you know, um, been in the works for a long time. I think I might go right here. Look at this. Okay, look at this. Some exemplary. Thank you. Some exemplary embodiment of the present disclosure may use human body activity associated with a task provided to a user user as a solution to mining challenges so they are going to use our body activity to solve mining challenges we are going to become nodes in crypto mining systems that is where this is going hey all the problems that we're going to solve election fraud uh the medical history with epidemiology you know uh in, in inflation and, and all this stuff um, they were having because the, the Fed lowered the required reserves ratio to zero also around the time this was published. You know, these are all contrived events, right? Cybersecurity, all this nonsense. These are all, you know, I'm not saying cybersecurity is contrived, right? But I mean, some of these hacks where they're like, oh, yeah, man, Russia just data breach. And, you know, anyway, um, these are all voter fraud, uh, the medical history. Um, you know, we can't we can't trust the banks. These are all just like Sam Altman created the problem of chat GPT and verification and AI, you know, can now, you know, mimic a human too well online. So we need this. We need the solution. He already had the solution. And for all those other things, they already have the solution. Some exemplary embodiments of the present disclosure may uh, you, so we're going to be a solution to mining challenges. Our body activity is going to be a solution to cryptocurrency system mining challenges. For example, for example, a brainwave, your brainwaves, right? You're, remember, they're taking pictures of your irises. They're just taking pictures, right? They're getting an iris hash. An iris hash. What, what, what if an iris hash is a little more than we understand? What if an iris hash is a little more than we understand? For example, a brainwave or body heat emitted from the user uh, when the user performs the task provided by an information service provider, such as viewing an advertisement. So this is going to be our new cryptocurrency system. This is going to be our new financial system. We don't really have to do anything more anymore. So what we're going to be now is humans in the future. We're going to be nodes in the blockchain, and we're going to solve cryptocurrency mining problems by viewing advertisements or using certain internet services which can be used in the mining process instead of mass computation work look, look at this they're even telling us how efficient it would be instead of mass computation work uh, required by some conventional cryptocurrency systems data generated based on the body activity uh, of the user can be a proof of work so if you know about these cryptocurrency systems what they want to do to make it more efficient and even more powerful is 
to use human body data activity instead of whatever machines they're using now, right? Because it's environmentally friendly probably is what they'll tell us. So we can be used as proof of work and therefore a user can solve computationally difficult problems, right? We'll even be better than the computers. Unconsciously, we won't even know we're doing this. According, we probably don't even know we're doing this now. Accordingly, certain exemplary embodiments of the present disclosure may reduce computational energy uh, for the mining process as well as make the mining process faster. Okay, so I know this is a lot, um, but this is something that they've been in the works for a while. And the whole point of this video is, baby, they're getting ready for this. This I think this is coming in 2024. I, I really think that... Th if it doesn't come in 2024, the other stocks that I've taken an investment in recently that got an eight or nine million dollar grant from the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation, they've got this mass testing thing that they want to do uh, between now and 2026. Okay, so I'll try to give a time frame, but this is coming. They, they, it has been in the works for a while, and they're getting this really big in pop culture, you know, trying to introduce this to you. I mean, they're. they're you know, and, and they're going to do this. Here's how they're going to push the issue. They're going to use, it may not be uh, CV-19. It may not be. Maybe it will be. Uh, it could be a variety of other things. But I think um, what they're going to do, they're going to force a mass testing issue over either the next year or the next few years. But it makes, I think they're going to do this next year. They're going to force a mass testing issue issue and the the solution this time is not going to be passports it's going to be a blockchain id okay i'm not saying it's going to be world coin i'm just saying that that kind of idea proof of personhood proof of our medical history you know i think that this is all going to come together i think this is all going to come together i don't want to get clean energy into it um you know or, or connect too many dots or anything uh but you know this is you know, Moderna, they're making an AIDS, an AIDS jab right now, right? What if they tell everyone, hey, go get tested for AIDS? Uh, I believe for, for co-diagnostics, uh, it's tuberculosis. You know, I'm, I'm going to be loading this one. I'm going to be loading this one in MRNY. I will be. Um, that, that's happening. That, that, that's honestly priority number one. Um, probably 50% Moderna, 50% MRNY. Like, th this is this is big. And I, I, I think this is coming, you know, this is just my Elliott wave count, you know, definitely not a, a recommendation. Um, this is an extremely uh, volatile stock. It's a, you know, speculative biotech, but uh, I, I'm getting in this one and MRNY, you know, I usually don't um, buy too many leaps on, you know, stocks that are over 20, $25. Um, I'm thinking about it for Pfizer. I'm really thinking about it. Um, we're, we'll see how close they make this, but I'm thinking about it. Um, leaps, you know, I'm certainly thinking about commons, you know, Pfizer gets back above 35. It's going to force the issue, uh, for commons for me. I've already taken a leap position, uh, in co-diagnostics, you know, the MMs, you know, they were looking at XBI recently, you know, this, I don't want to connect, you know, you know, the, the whole point about the virus and, and the, the jabs, I can just finish, you know, XBI right now. But when I, a lot of people think, well, how could they get people to do this, right? And I think that in 2020, they gave us their answer. They can stage a, a pandemic and they can have your employer just say, we're going to fire you. Or, or what did Joe Biden say? They said that they were going to, Find your employer thirteen thousand uh, dollars per violation, right? So you know, and even by the time that stuff is happening, you're being thought, "Oh, I'm going to be a burden to the company or whatever," right? And so now there's kind of recessionary stuff, and you don't want to be the unpopular guy who's against the iris hash to you know do your part, right? Just wear your mask, just get your jabs, just get more jabs, just get three boosters, right? You don't want to be a burden to this company, you know. Like, you're not going to want to be a burden to your company. I don't know when this is coming exactly, you know, for now. It's pretty tight. Um, not actually tight. Pretty good RR 61.78. You know, I'm looking for uh, XBI and Moderna and Pfizer and Co-Diagnostics. Um, I'm, 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 I'm getting FOMO for those. 
Now, I've already taken long positions in some of those, even some of the more junky names. Uh, like Inovio Pharma, I-N-O. You know, I've looked at leaps on that. Um, I don't want to just... The MMs are buying straddles on, on Pfizer every five minutes. Moderna, they've been buying strangles. If Moderna's at 75, I can promise you, you don't even need to look. They're buying the 85, uh, the 80 strike call and the 70 uh, put, uh, the 70 put strangle on uh, Moderna. Um, they're, they load Pfizer straddles and strangles all the time. Uh, XPI uh, was one on, on one of my big uh, signals uh, recently. So, you know, I don't want to connect too much of, you know, the, the stocks to what I was talking about recently. I just want to kind of, a lot of people think, how could this issue be forced, right? You know, with the elections and voting and, you know, how we saw that work out. One of the big things blockchain has always talked about is that it could solve, you know, voter ID. Certainly, you know, all that stuff with the jab passport. I can promise you, I'm not quite sure what year it's going to be when they bring back, you know, when they bring back a pandemic, whether it's in 2024 or 2025 or whenever, the solution, I can promise you, is going to be blockchain. And it's going to be hooking you up to it. And, you know, if you know about blockchain, you know, all this stuff with the metaverse, you know, I don't think it's just going to be pictures of your eyeballs. Even if it were just pictures of your eyeballs, you know, that sets up the next generation for even more. You know, but I, I think that this is more about, you know... I know a lot of people don't believe in souls. I know a lot of people don't believe in, you know, stuff like that. You know, I can tell you these people believe in souls. And, and even if you don't believe in souls, these people believe that they can upload your mind to either a blockchain or cloud computing. The reason I talked about code agnostics, I couldn't find um, the exact, um, the exact uh, link for it. Um, and I honestly just... I would sound like an idiot if I talked about, you know, molecular diagnostic testings and stuff. Um, but they, you know, and they just got this eight or nine million dollar grant from the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation. I have the uh, 20, um, 25 two strike leap calls. I bought an even number um, for for this on co diagnostics. And I'm thinking I'm gonna make a good amount of money uh, personally um, on that. And I don't quite know why, um, but the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation gave this company eight or nine million dollars. And this is a rapid testing kind of PCR thing. Um, you know, they say it's for tuberculosis and HPV. Right. But they can also do, you know, COVID stuff. Moderna, they got an AIDS vaccine. You know, they're working on who knows, you know, but there, there's going to be someone medical. Right. And this time, the solution to whatever the medical stuff is. Is going to be blockchain. And I, I, you know, don't quote me on this, but co-diagnostics, some of their epidemiology records, one of the things that they can do, apparently, is that they can have epidemiology records for these world governments hooked up to the cloud. You know, they could hook up, you know, your epidemiology records to the cloud. You know, they've been working on for a very long time. You know, hooking up your brain to the cloud, hooking up your brain waves, literally hooking up your brain waves as a solution to mining a cryptocurrency system and also your body activity, your body heat. Right. What do they talk about? Um, you know, they, they actually the um, FBI and the CIA uh, in 2020 said they've created something uh, that can track and detect uh, covid symptoms. Right. So your body heat. You know, you're, they, that's true. They, they've literally made something that can go track your body heat, right? And, and you know, your body heat, your brainwave activity, human body activity, uh, that you're going to be nodes in the blockchain now. So I want to pivot a little bit um, to uh, Zcash. I talked about a lot of these cryptocurrencies. Um, Zcash was mentioned in the article. Um, I couldn't, I, I was really thinking about buying WorldCoin. Um, I know that sound, might sound weird. I wasn't like thinking about like getting the ID or any ridiculous crap like that. I was thinking about investing in the, the token itself. Um, and then we got this contrived, you know, I'm, I'm sorry, not contrived news today that Sam Altman's coming back and what's certainly not a, you know, Easter Sunday ritual, right? Crucified on the cross on Friday, you know, uh, Sunday you're coming back, right? And this all happened on... Um, when this all happened, uh, this, this all happens. This is the first weekend that we're about to transition into Sagittarius. So in astrology, Christ, the sun, 
he's crucified uh, between two thieves. That's because um, the two uh, the two zodiac signs uh, that surround the season of Sagittarius um, are called the thieves in astrology. They're called that uh, because those are the two zodiac signs that surround Sagittarius where um, the entire world, all four hemispheres, do not have any um, you know, fruit bearing or harvesting times. It's it's kind of not a good time to be, you know, farming or producing crops anywhere in the world. Um, you know, uh, in the two zodiac signs that um, are outside or uh, surround the season of Sagittarius. So that's why in the Bible, Christ the Son um, is, is sacrificed between two thieves. Uh, the two thieves. Um, are those zodiac signs? And so Sam Altman, his crucifixion, right? Uh, very much a, a tribute to the the betrayal of Julius Caesar and Jesus Christ. Now we're even getting the, you know the you know fact he might be resurrecting his position. I've already seen, you know, people on Twitter committed, uh, you know, um, compare it to the resurrection of Christ. Uh, but anyway, back to, you know, all this colonialism, right? Mark Zuckerberg and the metaverse and, you know, how all those, you know, there's a lot of complaints about his, his you know, company and these third world companies. Elon Musk, he owns X, you know, dot com. He was buddy buddy, you know, with Sam Altman. And, you know, he, he wants everyone to prove their personhood too, right? That's another big goal these elites have. They want you to prove your personhood. You know, they want to hook you up to the blockchain. They want you to think that Elon Musk... Um, and Mark Zuckerberg aren't, aren't, aren't on the same team. Um, I, I think they, you know, uh, I, I think they certainly are. Um, 18.1198, that's a long-term invalidation for Zcash. Um, one, A, B, C, wave two, uh, possibly a long-term wave three. I know that's going to sound silly to some people. I know Solana and Ethereum and Bitcoin again. You know, sounds silly to some people, you know, Elon and, you know, he wants everyone to verify their identity, prove their personhood. Microsoft invests in a bunch of companies, you know, invest a bunch of money in open AI, you know, their, his, you know, their founder, ex CEO, maybe soon to be again, CEO, you know, uh, wants everyone to prove their personhood, um, you know, to combat all those AI bots that they're creating, you know, they're creating the problem. I think they're, they're going to give you the solution. I think they're going to give you. Uh, the solution very soon. I wanted to talk about Okta real quick. Uh, in the long term, we've seen a lot of these um, software stocks, um, you know, CrowdStrike, Datadog, um, Adobe, Salesforce is getting there. Um, Oracle has blown past some of these. Uh, IGV, um, the software ETF is breaking out to new highs. Okta is still hanging down around here. Um, but Shopify, a lot of these stocks, Roku even, they're kind of firming up in this ARC software low. I wanted to talk about, um, maybe I'll do a little more cybersecurity stocks, um, but Ox has gone past the 78.6% retracement. That long-term invalidation is going to be way too far uh, down there. Um, but uh, Elliott Wave and these fibs can give other um, levels for where an ABC correction can end. But really the idea is just going to be um, that this is five waves up, uh, three waves back at the 78.6% retracement. And, you know, Okta in the middle of the summer, they're starting to let people use WorldCoin. You know, I don't want to get, you know, but what if this is a very common thing for a lot of, you know, cybersecurity stocks or, you know, who knows? I, I, I just wanted to, you know, have a little fun. It's Sunday, you know, the day of Raw. You know, we're having Sam Altman, the son who was sacrificed on Good Friday, possibly resurrected his AI position. You know, it's a, it's a good day. I don't want to, you know, scare anybody or anything like that. But, you know, if you're an English teacher out there, you know, let people know, hey, you know, 1984 is outdated. I mean, we got we got people like Sam Altman, you know, they're scanning people's irises and, you know, Sudan and, you know, all these countries and, you know, bribing them, you know, with AirPods and money, you know, to use their irises as cryptographic you know, hashes and Microsoft has let us know for a long time. That's what they want all of us to do. I think soon your employer is about to ask you to do that. Uh, for Okta, I just think from this low, um, there is a possibility uh, that we see, you know, it begins, it, it, it's, a, it's impulse uh, from these lows. We've seen Palantir, 
Um, you know, a few of these, you know, ARC software names are really firming up. Pinterest starting to really firm up from that low. Uh, I know they've all got different things going on. Um, but, you know, software and Microsoft has actually been one of the biggest leading sectors, um, you know, this this year in IGV. Besides semiconductors, of course. Surprise, surprise. Uh, industrials, quietly, very good sector. Um, I'll probably cover them soon. But anyway, um, you know, I think there's a chance that, you know, Okta's ending an ABC correction. It's going to join the, you know, small cap software party. We've seen a little bit. I think I got these fibs perfect. Oh, I didn't. Wait, did I? 91.50. 69. So whenever there's a, you know, an ABC correction that forms like this, one of the things the Elliott Wave Theorist can do Oh, 67.72. You can take uh, Elliott Wave there. Take the uh, ABC correction. Uh, they measure the length of wave A. Place it the wave B high uh, with their Fibonacci extensions. And then that's going to give them um, a zone. I can remember what this number was for more than two seconds. All right. Now I think the fibs are perfect. Oh, man. Really? Okay. Okay. The fibs are good. Um, I think that this is an A, B, uh, C correction. Um, common trick in Elliott Wave is when these three waves pullbacks form, um, what um, one of, a wave theorist can do, they can go zoom out a little bit. I think this is one, two, three, four, five waves up. Uh, this is an A, B, C correction. So the 100% extension, that's kind of the first place uh, wave theorists look for wave uh, C to end. The 127.2% um, extension is 60.48. Uh, that's the most reasonable stop uh, for now unless it's just pick the low at 65, which is a little tight for Octus High Beta. Uh, the widest invalidation, which is too wide, uh, is 52.25, uh, you know? So in, in AI itself, man, I thought this was very, very sketchy. You know, the MMs were buying lots of strangles on this, lots of strangles on this, and now there's all this uncertainty uh, before it looks like AI enters wave three of wave three. Uh, that's my bias. Uh, we'll see if it sticks.